Welcome back EDU and PEP 417 students. This is uh, Dr. Chad Kish from Lincoln University and today I'm going to give you a brief lecture, uh, probably about 10 to 15 minutes, just with some instruction here on your module 11 and how to do some different things uh, with your lesson plan. All right, so I have pulled up the screen right now for our 417 class, and uh, here's the home page, so you kind of know what it looks like. Uh, scroll down over here, uh, make sure we get to the modules section, and click the modules hyperlink. Once we click that, uh, there's a lot of different things here. We've been through module 10, but we are now in module 11. So in module 11, start with your introduction page, and I'll briefly go over our introduction and then move through a couple things and show you a couple of the documents so you have an idea what to do uh, with your lesson planning this week. So the purpose of this module is to introduce you to lesson planning process for a creative lesson focused on NASB standards two through five. Students are going to be going to use uh, the introduction will be introduced to the process of delivering a lesson with no participants to prepare for a creative lesson delivery. Remember, you're going to use your topics that were assigned to you in Module 10 to continue to develop your lesson plan. Now, we'll also uh, give you the final assignment uh, that will replace the observation assignment. And uh, that, that module or page will have all kinds of information. I may uh, actually do another video to explain that if uh, it looks like we're having problems with just reading through the module. So here's what this module includes. A lesson plan creative lesson number two, which replaces your co-teaching. I'm going to explain to you uh, the lesson plan two uh, instructions template, your lesson planning worksheet. Uh, then we'll talk about uh, briefly how to deliver a lesson with no participants, uh, how to get to that information, and then how to get to the information for your final assignment. So your big ideas for module 11, can you uh, your big ideas tie right into your objectives, so I'll just scroll down to your outcomes, uh, objectives and outcomes. At the end of this module, you should, number one, be able to complete the lesson planning process for a creative lesson. You should, number two, be able to understand how to deliver a lesson without participants. Uh, and number three, you should be able to understand what you need to do for the final assignment. And that, like I said, that assignment replaces the observation assignment. It really depends on how far you were in your observation hours. Uh, the reading materials, uh, hopefully uh, you watched this brief video here. Uh, and you looked into the uh, final assignment information video presentation, I actually developed a video in there to show you uh, an example of how you teach a class with one uh, participant or no participants. Make sure you read all your assignment handouts uh, and your assignment background information. Uh, then read the assignment information for your creative lesson planning worksheet. I'll show you what those look like today. Make sure you read through the, the uh, page for the final assignment information, and if you have any questions, you need to email me immediately. Uh, you should get to work on that final assignment uh, at the end of uh, Module 11. You should start working on it because it'll be due in Module 15. And uh, make sure you read the document, How I Will Deliver a Lesson with No Participants. All right, so here are your assignments for the week. First one, you will do a creative lesson planning number two worksheet. That helps you start the process of developing your lesson plan. You'll submit that on Wednesday, April 1st, and I'll try to give you feedback Wednesday night or Thursday morning so you can then start working on your uh, next assignment. Uh, a lot of that information, you'll use my uh, instructor feedback uh, to develop that, and it will filter right into the next lesson, which is creating your lesson number two lesson plan assignment. You'll complete this assignment in Canvas uh, on Sunday, April 5th, and then that's what I will give you feedback for, and you will teach your video lesson uh, in Module 12 based on this lesson plan. All right, so go ahead and look ahead at the creative teaching video presentation and reflection assignments, and look ahead at your final assignments. I'll actually have pages in this module for those, so you don't have to scroll to the next modules. All right, if you uh, remember, you'll click Next to go to the next information, and Here's our lesson planning uh, video and links page. It basically introduces you to everything uh, you need. Uh, you're going to have your links to these different documents first, uh, your uh, lesson planning uh, 
or your lesson plan instructions is critical. You will use that document to develop your lesson planning worksheet and then to use your lesson plan uh, template uh, along with that. And then uh, I provided you an example what a lesson plan should look like uh, and I'll show you that document too. And then right here is where this video uh, is going to show up. All right, so let me go ahead and switch to my uh, document view here. And here is the instruction sheet. This is the first thing you should download and look at. We had one that was pretty similar uh, for our individual lesson plan. But here, this one's developed uh, exclusively for the creative video lesson plan instruction. I added a couple of things and took a couple of things out to help you prepare to teach a lesson uh, with uh, no or limited participants. So you'll just use all the information here. It details uh, what you should put in your lesson objective, what you should do for essential questions, if we remember what those are, uh, what we need to do to list our NASB standard. Uh, it explains how we will list the equipment and equipment safety. We will do another time plan, which is a full schedule. And right here, you will see it has all the different areas you should have in your time plan. It gives you a, a roadmap right there. It, next, it explains what I want in each of these three sections under instructional activities. That's your instant activity, your set induction, and then your content development, which has four different areas. So right here is the directions. We've done this already in our individual lesson plan. This is actually a little bit of a scaled down uh, idea, and uh, this, this plan has a little bit more information. It's a little more informative uh, on these directions. You'll go to your teaching cues. Make sure you list three or more of those. Those are phrases you use during teaching. Your corrective actions need to focus in on form when somebody has form error. You'll write down what's wrong and then how to correct it. I'll show you that on my lesson plan. Tactical cues is looking at results. All right, that is when anybody has some kind of result error. They're not making the basket or hitting the target. Uh, You'll use uh, strategies and modifications for diverse learners. This is identical to our individual lesson plan. You'll detail your assessment plan, and then you will have your lesson closure. And in your lesson closure, you should have two or more probing questions as well as replay one of your essential questions to see if uh, the students met uh, their learning targets. So let me get that one out of the way, and I will show you the planning worksheet. The planning worksheet is pretty simple. Uh, it's real similar to our last set of, set of plans. Use that lesson plan instruction document to fill in each of these sections. You're going to explain the lesson topic and content, your primary, so list only one NASB standard and how it fits. Make sure when you list your performance objective, you use the task condition criteria three-part method. Here's an area for your plan. So basically, this is in the planning worksheet assignment area. You'll download this template, fill out the template, use the instructions to assist you. Once you turn this in, I will give you feedback so then uh, within a day and you'll be able to use this with that feedback to start populating your lesson plan template. A lot of the stuff will go right into it. Remember this is not the lesson plan. This is a planning tool. You'll be able to copy and paste a lot of stuff into the lesson plan but this is not your lesson plan. Uh, it's not as uh, intense and it doesn't give, give me the correct information. All right, uh, the next area is this is the lesson plan template. So just like we did in the individual teaching, download this creative video lesson plan template and fill in all the information. Uh, as you, you can change spacing here, uh, I took out, you do not have to turn in a map. Uh, or a diagram of the court, and you do not have to turn in an assessment score sheet for this uh, create a video lesson plan. I just thought that would be too difficult to get in the template. All right, so you'll follow all the way down. Make sure in this document you copy and paste stuff from the lesson plan worksheet that works, and then you go back and use that lesson plan instruction document to help you complete the rest of it. You will save the document, and it has its own uh, assignment portal to submit this just like we did last time. This one is a big one, it's worth 50 points. Make sure you're very detailed and do a nice job. All right, and we will get to my last uh, example here. This is an example of a lesson plan that I developed, and actually later I'll show you where the video lesson I taught 
towards this uh, specific lesson plan is. Uh, that way you'll have an idea of what a video lesson looks like with limited uh, participation. So this lesson plan is on shooting a basketball or a free throw, uh, and it's for a high school grade level. If you see my lesson objective here, the student will be able to shoot a basketball is my task. Using correct form is my condition, so I really need to look for that, in order to make 40% of their free throws, which is 2 out of 5 or 4 out of 10. Uh, usually if you use an out of 5 or out of 10, it's easy for the students to understand. I have two essential questions listed, and remember, these are questions the students should ask themselves at the end of the lesson. I actually take one of these and put it at the end of the lesson. Can I use correct form to shoot a basketball, and can I make 40% of my free throws? These are basically questions taken right here out of my lesson objective. My NASB standard for this one is standard number one, and I explain what that standard is. I listed all my equipment and the quantity. I detailed the quantity because I don't know how many participants I'm going to have. Uh, my time plan here, if you look at the time plan, you can download this uh, example lesson plan. It's provided in this uh, module. Uh, you'll see all the different ways I detailed the instant activity, the warm-up, the set induction. I went through every single one of those on the video and explained it. I put my teaching cues here. When I like to teach shooting form, I use the beef principle, balance, eyes, elbow, and follow-through. And I broke those down into your four uh, important parts to any action that we talk about. We talk about the stance, the preparatory phase, the action or execution phase, and the follow-through. Uh, I detailed some corrective actions. All right, and corrective actions, I, I want you to tell me what they're doing wrong. Their stance is wrong, so I'm looking for this. Their prep is wrong. This is what I'm looking for. In my tactical cues, that's some ideas to help improve results. I first detailed what the problem is. They're erratic, or their shot is left or right, or their shot is short. And then I detailed how to correct that with some tactical cues. I put strategies for a struggling learner and a student with a disability. I detailed my assessment plan, assessment plan, both my formative and my summative. I have two things here in my summative. And then in my closure, I have three probing questions or ideas that I could close to see if my students were uh, meeting the performance objective. And I asked one of my essential questions. So this, uh, this should be able to walk you through uh, the video lesson and uh, help you help you see that. So let me uh, let me go back here, and I'm going to roll through the rest of this module before we get done. Uh, the creative lesson planning worksheet. It has your worksheet template to download and instructions to the lesson plan. Uh, that is due April 1st at 8 p.m. You'll have a uh, another portal for your creative lesson number two lesson plan. The lesson plan template is linked here, as well as another copy of the lesson plan instructions. It is going to be due April 5th at 8 p.m., and the rubric, 50 points, is attached to the lesson so you know what to look for in scoring. The video lesson information page I put together that basically is how do I teach a lesson with no participants. So I explain what you'll do. If you consider this really as I'm teaching a lesson, but I'm doing a practice run. You probably did this in your individual teaching. You practice with nobody, talked it through with yourself walked around in your living room, uh, or you might use what's ghost students. You're, you're telling somebody to do something that's out there. So if you think of it that way, that is what your video lesson is going to look like with no participants. Uh, I give you some expectations here, what I really want you to do. I expect you to do a 10 to 15 minute video presentation of you teaching with good enough audio that I can hear you, so speak very loudly, and detail the important parts of your lesson. When you watch this example video right here, you'll get a good idea of what your video should look like. I really want it to look like that. I developed this with Mr. Ole Schlager and Ms. Mosley. Uh, if you don't have two people uh, to help you, one to, to uh, video and one to be your sample, uh, you can scale that down and do it with nobody. Uh, I don't expect you to have a professional quality video, but if you do, that's great. I'm really scoring you on if you taught the lesson, not how good your video is. Uh, we all have video cameras on our phone. Uh, that is good enough. Uh, down here, I tell you uh, exactly. There's a, a link to all this information if you want to just pull this information down in a document. 
I explain the assignment again, and then I give you some websites to help you uh, develop your, your video. Uh, I would prefer that you took your video, uploaded it to YouTube, and then sent me your YouTube link as your uh, um, submission. So uh, your video lesson is going to be due Sunday, April 12th by 8 p.m., and you'll also have a teaching reflection on that. But those are all, all going to be in uh, Module 12. All right, the next thing I want to just briefly introduce you to is the final assignment information page. Uh, look at this here. Read through all the information. This is going to replace the observation and all the associated assignments. So there's three different criteria you could fit here. And I'm going on what where you were when you turned in your midterm observation hours to determine what your assignment will be. If you had 10 or more observation hours that you logged and turned in, you will complete the observation reflection paper. The document is right here. Uh, if you go to uh, the module 15, I have most of module 15 done, but I have it open you could actually download that assignment and go ahead and complete it. The assignment portal is there. If you did not complete 10 hours, there's two different things you could have to do. Anybody that had five to 10 hours at midterm, so you were under 10, but you had at least five, you will do one cycle of developing a creative lesson plan and video. It's all explained right here. So what you will basically do is develop another set of lesson plans, videos, and a lesson reflection worksheet. There's an informational handout right here, uh, and there's some examples here of what you can do. If you have less than five hours, you'll basically do two cycles of this. So you'll create two lesson plans, two videos, and do two reflections. If you think about it, I think you would do a lesson plan and a video and a reflection in less than five hours of time. So although it does sound like it's a time commitment, that's five hours that you would have been observing and then still doing the observation uh, assignments such as the reflection paper and the different worksheets. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. I will be emailing everybody exactly where they stand here. So I'll email you and tell you which assignment you should do. And both of these uh, assignments are already open in module 15 if you wanna start them and get them out of the way. If you're doing a lesson plan, uh, and lesson video, you might want to wait till we get through uh, module 12 just so you uh, see the process and, and understand how it is and get my original feedback. All right, so uh, after that, we would go right into module 12. So that's all we have for module 11. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to uh, send me an email. Try to meet with me during my virtual uh, office hours. I'm only a click away. I'm here to help you get where you need to go in your educational pursuits. Uh, although there is some work in an online class, if you put your mind to all this work is helping me prepare to be the best professional I could be, whether that's a teacher, a coach, or a wellness professional, uh, I think you're gonna be all right. But get your mindset around, uh, enjoy, embrace, and learn from the process. Don't just feel like it's work. Have a great day, and uh, like I said, email me if you have any questions, and I will talk to you soon.